Hi everyone, my name is Nisha Danti. I'm a cardiac hospitalist at UCSF, and I'm here with Dr. Brian Bergmark today. Uh, Dr. Brian Bergmark is an interventional cardiologist in the Division of Cardiovascular Medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital. He's an instructor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and investigator at the Timmy Study Group. He treats patients who require complex revascularization as a member of the Complex Coronary Intervention and Chronic Total Occlusion Program. His research interests include acute coronary syndrome, cardiometabolic disease, and complex coronary interventions. And today we're going to be discussing his uh, late-breaking clinical trial presentation on, on the effect of vupanorsin on non-high-density lipoprotein cholesterol levels in statin-treated patients with elevated cholesterol. And this is part of the Translate TIMI-70 trial. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the study to start off. Great, thank you. Really appreciate the chance to be here. Uh, so the motivation for this trial is that uh, despite a number of therapies that exist, there is still a residual cardiovascular lipid-mediated risk. And uh, there are new targets being identified uh, to potentially modify that risk. One of them is ANG-PTL3, which is a hepatically generated protein that inhibits lipases. The uh, drug being studied here, buprenorsin, is an antisense oligonucleotide, or ASO, that targets ANG-PTL3 synthesis in the liver and therefore uh, inhibits ANG-PTL3 function. The goal here was to see if we could find uh, doses of buprenorsin that would significantly reduce non-HDL cholesterol and thereby modify cardiovascular risk. Thank you. And how did you come to uh, choose buprenorsin as a target to study? Yeah, so it is, it is one of many uh, agents looking uh, sort of beyond the cholesterol-rich lipoproteins into the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins that are being studied. Uh, so ANG-PTL3, the target has been identified genetically. There's a monoclonal antibody uh, against ANG-PTL3 that's approved for use in people uh, with homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia. So it makes sense as a target for cardiovascular risk reduction in a broader population, potentially. There are other ways to impact this target. There's an siRNA that's being developed. This is one of those that has made it along far enough in development to be tested at this stage. And just a clarification for the fellows that are listening, could you go explain a little bit about what the Timmy group is and what they do? Yeah, thank you. Good point. Yeah, so the Timmy Study Group is an ARO, an academic research organization. So we are part of Brigham and Women's Hospital, and we do randomized controlled trials. They're largely of uh, pharmaceutical agents and typically on approval pathways, so typically in partnership with a pharmaceutical company sponsor who provides the resources to do the trial, and we provide the academic leadership in collaboration to design, execute, and interpret. The trial. Thank you. And do you feel that buprenorsin is something that you would potentially use for your patients in the future? And what would need to happen before you would prescribe it for your patients? Yeah, great question. Uh, so uh, before I answer that, I, I'll just summarize a little bit about what we found in the trial, which was that there was a significant reduction in non-HDL cholesterol, which was our primary endpoint at each of the doses of buprenorsin, which we studied. The, the degree of that reduction was lower uh, than uh, was possible, potentially, or that we might have hoped. And there were also important side effects. So there was actually an increase in liver fat at higher doses. There were elevations in ALT and AST. Uh, and there were also a lot of skin reactions uh, w with the drug. So Pfizer's actually announced that they are no longer going to move forward with this particular compound. So it, it, there's not a foreseeable path by which somebody would be using this drug to, to modify uh, lipid risk for this purpose. Um, the, there is 
conceivably somebody could decide that they want to look at it for triglyceride lowering at a lower dose or something. So it's not completely out of the question. Um, but I think for buprenorphine in the clinic, that's something that's not likely on the horizon. I think what the takeaway is for somebody, you know, kind of in cardiology, learning cardiology, thinking about where this is going is where this study, where this compound fits in the bigger picture, that we are moving beyond these sort of cholesterol-rich lipoprotein-targeted therapies like PCSK9 inhibitors, statins, ezetimibe, and looking at the entire lipoprotein spectrum in a broader way and with targeted therapies. And so I think this is how we move toward a personalized approach toward lipid management. Now, this particular drug, as I said, I don't think is going to be part of it, but this will inform and be part of the context as other drugs are studied, other targets are studied. What is, what is the bigger picture here about how we move this forward? Thank you. Uh, anything else you would, do, uh, you would like to add about any of the challenges you came across uh, in the process of this study um, in terms of the design or um, unforeseen factors that might be helpful for fellows interested in research? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't have sort of a simple, easy response to that. I think from the perspective of a fellow looking toward potentially doing this kind of work, what's really critical is to, to be involved with uh, people who are supportive and, and have a group that works well together so that as issues arise, as these things start coming in, there are higher rates of injection site reactions, uh, et cetera, and therefore people discontinuing the drug than you had anticipated, uh, that you have a group of people who's familiar with encountering these issues, working collaboratively together uh, uh, with a sponsor within the group, and, and finding uh, a way to, to monitor to ensure patient safety, but also uh, bring the study to conclusion so that actually you learn something uh, from the study. Um, and so this, uh, I think, was a lesson in, in doing that. Yeah, definitely. Sounds like even though uh, this drug may not be used for patients moving forward, we definitely learned a lot as a scientific community from this study and um, we'll definitely be better off for it. So thank you so much for your work and uh, congratulations on the paper that's been published in circulation.